and we're back with some Kenshi. And today we're going to be starting off with some tra training in the Thunderdome. Well, okay, it's not a dome or anything, but it's it's the best name I can come up with. For our technique, we're going to need ourselves a bunch of cripples. So we've got one here, another one here, 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 and here. We uh, made our own, a bunch of hungry bandits showed up. Um, we wield, or what you call those blades again? Ah, falling suns. Falling suns, they have a tendency to remove things. They're pretty high damage. So that allowed us to grab a whole bunch of these. Now all we got to do is wait until they've healed up a bit. Uh, yeah, they're missing a lot of blood. Uh, once they've healed up enough, we can start on our training regime. Our first trainee here is going to be Mew. M-I-U. They're our farmer. Time to get them sorted. First up, time to go to the gear factory. Now over here is where we've been keeping all of our armor and such like. Uh, we've, we've had everyone running around doing a whole bunch of crafting on the side. Uh, before we craft them up, let's uh, let's have a quick look around. Right over here we've got Chad. They're working on making some sandals. We want to get everyone with sandals as opposed to the shoes we've been giving them before. We checked down here under Muppet. We've been giving them samurai boots. This, it seems, is kind of pointless. It gives coverage of 40% to the right leg and the left leg, but drastically reduces stealth affects your dodge, your athletics, and, you know, it's pretty much just a, a big negative. Considering that the, the leg plates already give you 100% coverage, this extra 40% on each leg is not really worth all of that effort. I would much prefer to have some sandals. So, you come back here for a second. Here they are. So, what we're going to do is give them white plate jacket. Now, this armor is a lot lighter than the samurai armor, but it's pretty good. It's not quite as good, but 100% coverage, solid protection all around. It's a decent armor, and it doesn't weigh too much. Now, remember, these people are just going to be support personnel. Now, the boots are pretty good as well, and then we'll throw on some samurai leg plates. You know what, you can keep the shirt, and we'll throw on a samurai helmet. So, they're quite well armored, but they're not the 60 kilos in weight that our normal characters have. Also, we can, we can get rid of these weapons. We're going to have to start trashing some of this stuff. In fact, that can go, all of that stuff can go on the ground. You are not going to be using that anymore. And done. That's them well equipped for the start of their training. Now, we're going to run them over to this section. Now, give me one minute while I get them prepped. Inside our training area here, we have this little room in the corner, and this is where we're going to grab our little resources. So over here, we've got access to some crab armor, rusty chainmail, boots, a helmet, some leggings. Yeah, that seems about right. And then what we'll do is we will run over here. Where are you? Ah, uh, we'll grab one of these ones that's just about healed up. Come on. Nope, leg's still good. You are... Nope. Oh, there we go. Perfect. You will be our little test dummy. And we're going to loot you, and instead, we're going to put all this stuff on you. Uh, yeah, we don't care about your clothing. We'll dump that later, and your weapon can go too. Actually, you know what? You can keep the weapon. We'll let you have the Iron Club. I'm not sure if it works if you don't have it, so... Yeah, keep the Iron Club. Maybe it will help. Then we'll check on a helmet onto you, put on these boots, a uh, chainmail shirt, and this crab stuff. Oh, I forgot the backpack. Gotta go grab the backpack. You've got Mew back, and we've equipped her with a new backpack. This backpack is uh, a little heavy. It's full of a lot of iron. It puts them to 539 kilos. They are incredibly overweight. And let's help with that by picking up. There we go. We're going to pick them up. And then at the same time, we are going to... Oh, actually, we can set them free? Yeah, we'll set them free. Come on. There you go. Yeah, whatever. I'm getting as far away from you as possible, sadistic freak. Yeah, you can't get very far. Now, as you can see, they're unable to attack back because, well, they're crippled. And their weapon requires them to be able to stand up. And so they can't actually attack back, and we get to punch them as much as we want. Oh, I bring up the statistics here. Now, the thing is, our martial arts are not going to get much better very fast because, well... We're very heavily overloaded. Our dexterity will go up, our strength will go up, our martial arts will go up. However, our uh, our toughness is going to go up a lot as well. This is mainly the whole reason we do this at first, is to get the toughness up to about 15. They already have their toughness at 15, but I thought I'd show you how it will start. And you keep punching them until your arms fall off. Oh wait, you have, an, uh, you have a robotic left arm. This is going to make it way easier. So they punch them a bunch, their martial arts go up. Their strength goes up, their dexterity goes up. Let's fast forward this a bit. And there we go. Uh, so they have been beaten unconscious. Oh, I think they're getting back up again. Mew, uh, let's let's get you to put them back in the cage. And uh, drop them. You can put them down. And you see, you'll notice that they've got a bit of a limp. 
yeah, they, they sometimes kick with their leg, which is why their toughness is going up. Oh, and put them back in the cage. Perfect. Then we can loot them again and take all their armor off them for the next training dummy. And done. We then pop back over to our little cabin here. Uh, and inside it, we'll just drop off all this stuff for the next training dummy. Should we leave the... Yeah, actually, we'll leave the backpack in there for now. We're going to do that for the next section. Then we're going to take a nap for the day. There's also a bunch of food in this nearby place so that they can stay locked in here without anyone else calling them any grief. And Michelangelo here is not going to cause them any problems. And once they've rested up enough to be healed, we'll start on phase two. Who's just about ready to go round two. Or Mew, I should say. Anyway, once you've uh, kicked or punched a cripple until you've got your toughness up to about 15, what you're going to want to do then is, same thing again, actually, we want to drive down our melee stat even more. So what we're going to do here is, we're going to put on the crab armor. Down the bottom there, it's got a melee attack bonus of minus 10 and a martial arts bonus of minus 10. Like this armor here only has a martial arts bonus negative of minus 10. We want to stack that stuff up as high as possible. Uh, the pants actually have a minus 10 to martial arts as well, but so do the ones we currently have. And the helmet is, actually everything else we've got is pretty much as bad as it's going to get. So then we're going to go over here and yes, that is a beak thing. Turns out you can put beak things in a bed. And once you have them in a bed, you can attack them. I swear to God, yes you can. Now, you can't right click attack them. As in you can't go right click to go attack them. That won't work. You just have to, right click hold won't work. You just right click once. You just tap it. And done. Now let's see here what happens as this goes along. You, you've got martial arts of seven. Now you've got martial arts of eight. Your, t your dexterity is up to 15, 16, 17. Yep, they are kicking the snot out of that thing. And it's actually healing while it's in there. Of course, we will get better and better. And as you can see, our dexterity is going up. Our toughness is going up just a little scooch, and our strength is also going up just a bit as well. There you can see, yep, strength is going up, 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 nine. Nice. And we just leave them there for a bit and fast forward this. All right, all right, it's gone into a recovery coma. It's time to leave it alone for now. And that also trains up its toughness quite nicely. Well, there we go. Mew is now up to 52 dexterity, their toughness is at 17, strength is at 16, martial arts is at 50. I think that's enough uh, dexterity training. I don't want to go too crazy with this. You can go to some extreme lengths, especially with some of the training dummies you can get, it seems. So I think we'll just train up about 50 dexterity on everyone, and then we can equip them with some weapons and leave them to defend the colony while we go out and attack stuff. Uh, this thing can actually just stay here and stay in bed, and as you see, it's actually healing up because it's in a camp bed at four times normal rate. We could do this inside, but ah, it's not nearly as much fun. All right. You is probably going to grab a snack. Yeah, perfect. And uh, yeah, that's how we're going to do it. We're going to trend up everyone's dexterity. Well, toughness to 15, then dexterity up to about 50. Then once we've got them all done, we'll probably do a bunch of strength training by overloading them with a bunch of iron ore and getting them to run around in circles. Uh, I think for strength, we're only going to probably level them up to about 50 as well. So 50 strength, 50 de dex. And that should be our whole home team. Well, except for Beep and Ellis. They're they're two warriors. They gotta be coming with us. So we'll train them up for actual in the field for combat. This here is Crumble John. Uh, they've uh, been crumbling away and they've got a little bit of a bad back, but that's okay. They're now laden down with 560 kilos and they'll be just fine. We're gonna set free this hungry bandit. Uh, you won't get away with this. That's... But, uh, damn it. Don't pick him up. Don't drop him. Excellent. Now, uh, if we attack the target... We can see that this is going to hurt our fists. As you can see, our left arm is going down in health every time we hit them. Yeah, but it is toughening us up. We're at 13 toughness, 94. Come on. Still 94? 95? All right, once our arms start to pretty much be ablated away, that should crank up our toughness high enough. All right, Cripple John is just about up to level toughness 15. There we go. We just got to make sure that they beat that first unconscious, which I think they already have. Ah, damn it. Just the problem was they started out with much higher strength than anyone else. So this meant that they were actually much more capable of, of actually doing a lot of damage as a martial artist. Everyone else had much lower strength, which means that we didn't have to go through as many cripples. Like one, two, three. We went through four people before they eventually got their toughness up to 15. I mean, good job, Crumble John. I mean, your rep precedes you, I suppose. Anyway, let's grab this junk back. 
Uh, time to move on to beak trading. Beak trading is where the real gains will be made. Uh, specifically in dexterity. We're at 38% now uh, on dexterity 20. We're on to dexterity 21. Dexterity 22. One of the problems though is they actually have quite high strength. Their strength is at 29, which yeah, we probably shouldn't have got their strength up that high, but that means that they're going to do an awful lot more damage with their melee attacks, which means they we're going to run out of beak thing much quicker. That's fine. I think we can acquire more big things. In fact, I have absolutely zero sympathy for these big things, considering all the horrors they've put me through. Using them as training dummies seems perfectly reasonable. Anyway, once Crumble John is done, we'll move on down along the line. I'll, I'll cut all of this out, but it'll basically be training everyone up. Beep is already looking pretty tough there. Look at that. 51 dexterity, 16 strength on Beep, 47 in martial arts. We could get everyone into martial arts, but I'd prefer not to. That stuff gets way too overpowered near the end game. I have refined down the process somewhat. Uh, Hamut here is our next person up, and you'll notice there we've got them carrying around an animal while heavily laden down and just generally terrible at stuff. The reason being is we want these massive encumbrance penalties to reduce their martial arts skill, reduce their dexterity, and basically make them weaker so that it takes them longer to do more damage, which means the big things last longer in the testing. So for example, that big thing is there like that, and if we go under stats here, we'll just chuck this off to the side, but effectively what should happen is we'll do very, very little damage to this big thing. But at the same time, We'll still be getting our stats our stats up. So our strength is going up, our dexterity is going up actually very rapidly, and our martial arts will eventually go up at some point. And there we go, we just let it run. Now, I've stopped bothering training up the toughness on the cripples. It was just too much time consuming and too much micromanagement. Instead, I'm just gonna let them all punch away at these things. They will get a little bit of toughness out of it, but probably only four or five. But I think I'm kind of okay with that. Anyway, we'll let this run away. We're up to Hamut. I think it's Infinite Wing Wang next, then Green Silver Shade all the way down the line. Now, I can understand some of you who are new to Kenshi might be concerned about the welfare of these poor, poor big things. Don't be. Don't be even a little bit. These things are horrific monstrosities that never should have existed in the first place. This is a kindness what we are doing. It's crazy how after a while of playing Kenshi, stuff like this just seems normal. Yeah, we're, we're just going to let this person punch a giant big thing with their bare fists. Why not? Let's let them do that for a whole day, and at the end of it, they will be incredibly dexterous. That's just the way it is, while carrying around a Garu on their back full of stuff. It's kind of crazy. Oh, uh, where is it? Uh, their dexterity... How is their dexterity that high? Oh, wait, wrong one. There we go. And you'll notice that their martial arts is minus 37. Basically, they have so much encumbrance, their martial arts can't ever get above zero, which is why all well, their damage is so low. Also, the dexterity is getting a minus 15, so our, dex our, our real dexterity is now only 11. It's just all our armor and equipment is cutting into all of that. And that's because we stuck on all the stuff that gave massive negatives to dexterity. We get a, a, buy, a 0.5 multiplier to our dexterity just from the crab armor. Uh, another, where is it? Uh, this one actually affects combat speed, athletics. Uh, nothing too big there, actually. It's more the weight from that one. Uh, this, ah, this one. 0.85 multiplier for dexterity as well. So this just means we do very, very little damage all the time. And because we're doing so little damage, but even though we're doing so little damage, we still get the dexterity gain. And we've also driven down our combat stats really low, and there's this, uh, because we've driven down our combat stats, so realistically our martial arts are, what, 37? But down here they're showing up as 3. It allows us to gain martial arts and gain dexterity really quickly, just nice and fast. All right, once, uh, let me click on that one. Once the damage on this one starts to get a little bit high and we start actually doing lasting damage that they can't recover from, we move on to the next and then the next. Usually we go through about three of them, two, two and a half, and then uh, we're good. Then we send in the next person and the next. Well, the training is done. All of our recruits are also equipped as well. Okay, it's not the best equipment in the world, but they'll, they'll build their own. They've all got quite high dexterity, like 40 or 50. Strength has lagged quite a lot behind, not going to lie on that front. But we got to get them weapons too. And that's why this little caravan is here. We got Makujin, uh, Nat Model, and Hero Lucky. They're going to go on a little trip. You see, we need to get our hands on a blueprint. And this blueprint is going to be a little bit annoying to find because we've got to go to the Holy Nation. They don't like us. Uh, well, actually, wait, no. The Holy Nation don't like anyone who's not a Greenlander. So we brought Makujin, Nat, and Hero because all of them are Greenlanders. So they shouldn't be angry with them. We'd have to leave hero fodder behind because uh, they actually have an artificial leg. They don't like robots. So we're going to go over there, do a little bit of trading, and get our hands on the blueprint for their paladin cross weapon, which is really good for killing robots. I kind of want to get into using some hacking weapons for some of our people. I was doing a bunch of numbers on the side, and it turns out you might be better off using a bunch of those. I'll, I'll go over the numbers in a bit, but first, to bad teeth we go.
Nothing like a lovely moonlit stroll through the border zone. Ah, I'm not really that worried. The worst thing we'll face is, what, dust bandits? I'm pretty sure our bull could take care of them, if they could keep up. Their pathing appears to be not as good as our people, though their speed, their speed is now up to 28 miles per hour. Guys, seriously, try and keep it together, would you? It's just their cornering speed is, is just not great. They have a little bit of a problem taking corners. I, I don't know, maybe it's the diet I've got them on. Our team has made it all the way to Blister Hill. We hit up Stack, Bad Teeth and Blister Hill, and we've managed to find the blueprints we were looking for. So, oh, I also got the tin can. Uh, I wanted that one. The Paladin's Cross. This is the one they use to destroy machines. It's quite a nice weapon. And I grabbed the sabers on the horse chopper because why not? We've got so many blueprints at this point. Also managed to pick up Bard along the way. They talk a lot, like an awful lot, but that's that's our excursion into the Holy Lands done. We're getting out of here. These nut jobs are absolutely crazy. We're going to head back out to the outpost. It's time to start equipping people up. That, we should probably go through the numbers. Uh, I did a bunch of side... Well, I was just running the numbers on weapons. I haven't actually done any practical testing because that's well, going to be difficult. We've got to put them into people's hands first. But uh, numbers-wise, it looks very interesting. All right, all right. I, I swear I haven't gone that crazy. It's just... I was trying to figure out which weapons were good and I kept going back and doing the same things all over again. So I just had to put it in a spreadsheet so I knew where everything was. Most important bits to realize here is this is the weapon's name and this is its total damage on average. Now... I'll have to explain where I got those numbers from, but this is just a good guesstimate of where a weapon falls in terms of damage. Now, the falling sun here is at the top because its damage output is kind of ridiculous. That thing is just mm, beautiful. However, it, it does have a cost. The required strength to wield it is 60. Uh, everything has a hidden cost in how much strength it takes to use. If you don't have the required strength, you're going to swing it like an old granny and it'll take you so long to wind up, you'll never actually hit anyone. Uh, to work out how much strength is required for a weapon, either look at the wiki or just take the blunt damage and multiply it by 40. So the higher the blunt damage of a weapon, the more required strength you're going to need to wield it. So I stuck in the cut and blunt damage here, and this is the total blunt and cut damage of the weapon. Just, just to give you a rough idea of how much damage output you're going to be getting. Now over here, what I've done is I've basically take, well, this here is the total damage, and the way I got that was I assumed you had a character that's 50-50-50, as in they have 50 strength, 50 dexterity, and 50 skill in the weapon type. For example, these three weapons here, they're all heavy weapons. So if you had a 50 skill in heavy weapons, 50 strength, 50 dex, and you were equipped with a falling sun, this is how much cut damage it would do, this is how much blunt damage it would do, oh, yep. Yeah. And this over here would be the total damage, or the total of those two combined. And then we stuck in all the specials on the end, or if they've got any armor penetration bonuses. This gives us a good idea what everything is. Now, I stuck in the plank and the fragment axe, though, oh, Honestly, the Fragment Axe is pretty much just a joke. It's really hard to use. And all the weapons I'm using here, they're all from the best you can possibly craft, as in your people. So there's two weapons that are higher level than this that you can actually find in-game that have bigger strength requirements. I think the, the I think it's called a Mewtwo? Whatever, whatever, I can't pronounce that. The highest level weapon, this has 144 strength to wield the Fragment Axe, the best one in the game. That's insane. You would need to have both arms replaced with robotic arms and still have a base strength of 100 just to even have a hope of wielding it. And in the moment someone cuts you on the arm, chest or stomach, you're going to lose a little bit of strength and then you're going to start swinging it like a granny. So I would really consider the Fragment Axe a good choice. It's a, it's, a, it's a bold choice, but a very difficult one. The plank is not quite as bad. You could actually have someone wield this one. But why, I suppose, it'd be the question? The Falling Sun just generally tends to be better. But... The reason it come, it's still used by some people is it's enormous blunt damage. That's one thing that's not really brought up too much, but when it comes to armors, armors usually have very high cut damage, but much lower blunt damage. So the more blunt damage you have, the more damage you're going to get through heavily armored targets. So blunt damage versus heavily armored targets is generally a good thing. Though, you're going to think, oh, I'm going to use that against skeletons. No, as far as I can tell, blunt damage does no more or no less damage versus skeletons than anything else. Cut damage, blunt damage, it's all the same to skellies, as far as I've been able to determine. If you want to hurt skeletons, you want like a bonus, like say, oh, plus 50% damage, or if you want to cut through armor, you want armor penetration. Blunt damage does nothing extra versus skeletons. It's just good at getting through armor because armor has less defense against it. So with all the numbers and why everything's where it is aside, um, the plank, no, I would not recommend it. Unless you're going really late game character and you want to invest a lot of time and effort in them, because you're going to need to put in some extra strength to make this viable. You're going to want about 20 strength more than the 70s. So you're going to need about 92 strength to wield this and not worry about a long fight draining your strength so low that you can't actually wield it properly anymore. Every single fight, well, the vast majority of fights in Kenshi are single, one person versus another. 
unless you're fighting, say, giant crabs or something like that, then they have extra engagement slots. So if you're facing off against ten, if one hungry bandit and you bring in five people to attack them, only one person can attack at a time, and they'll just take turns. That's pretty much how it goes. Now, there are several different weapon types in the game. For example, this is all the heavy weapons up here. Down here we've got your choppers, or your hackers, I should say. Then we've got sabers, then we stuck in some pole arms, and then the bottom we've got your katanas. Now, what I want you to do is think of the weapons more as like a weapons package. For example, the, the ring saber here is probably one of the better sabers you can get. There'll be preferences in there. But the thing is, it doesn't really have any bonuses going for or against it. It has a decent amount of cut damage, but that's sort of it. And once you, and when you're leveling up, you're leveling up your saber skill, and you can put in different sabers if you want, but none of the sabers you can replace the ring saber with are really much better. There's some that get bonuses versus spiders and low-end things, but realistically what you're looking at here, if you start wielding sabers, you're going to want to transition out of them as you get later into the game. Later in the game, the main threats you're going to be facing are robots and heavily armored targets. For that, you're going to want something with a little bit of more oomph to it. So early on, this may seem like a wonderful choice, but as you're heading from mid-game to late-game, it'll become less and less viable. The same with, say, the Nodachi. Wonderful weapon, everyone loves it, it's great. However, it's got minus 20% armor penetration, and minus 40% versus animals and robots. That's going to be problematic long-term. Wonderful weapon to start, great to do your training, your decks and stuff, but you're going to want to see about transitioning into a more long-term weapons. So for long-term weapons, I would probably... I, I was looking at the pole arms, but I would probably lean more towards hackers and heavy weapons, namely because the Falling Sun is incredibly good, but a little bit expensive. You can want about 80 strength to use that correctly. The Paladin's Cross, Long Cleaver, all of these, 48 strength, so say 70 strength. 70 strength means you could use these quite reliably, and they do quite a lot of damage, and they come with a good selection of options. But for now, what I want to look at is, say, pole arms. Pole arms are one of those things that I was quite interested in because they seem to have a good mix of characteristics. They have great reach, 26 or 28, depending on the heavy pole arm or the regular. Uh, their damage is, uh, that's probably where they fall off the most. But they do come with 30% armor penetration. And the way armor penetration works in this game is, uh, just say someone's got, oh, 50% cut resistance on their, on their armor. And you have 30% armor penetration, you don't actually reduce their armor their armor to 20%. No, you actually take 30% away from the 50. So you're actually reducing by about 15 points. So they'll have about 35% armor protection against cut, as opposed to the 50 they would have normally. This means it's more and more effective. The more heavily armored the targets are, the more you're going to want armor penetration. On lower armor targets, it's less of an issue. But there's not a lot of armor penetration out there that's very viable. You're basically looking at pole arms and hackers. That's just about it. So these ones are interesting, and the heavy pole arm and the pole arm both come with bonuses to animals as well. These make good early to late game choices, namely because the strength requirements are pretty low. At the same time, they do give you bonuses versus animals, and you'll be fighting a fair chunk of animals, spiders, beak things, all sorts of yokes early on. And the armor penetration kind of tides you over into late game. You can take on some heavily armored targets, though I probably wouldn't recommend it. Now, the ring saber, oh, ring saber, nodachi, pole arms, all this stuff, they're all kind of nice weapons, but they're more... Uh, just, I, I can't see you taking them into the very late game. For that, you're looking at your hackers or your heavy weapons. And the hackers are probably where it's most interesting for me. This is the Paladin's Cross. This is the Holy Nation's premier weapon for destroying robots, namely because it's got a 50% damage bonus versus robots. It has a minus 10% damage versus humans and animals. You're not going to be going out slaughtering animals with this. You probably could slaughter quite a lot of humans, though. And the thing is, once you're strong enough to start equipping this, Dust bandits and lightly armored targets are not going to be an issue. All the low-level spam, you'll be able to slaughter it anyway, so you don't really care about having, you know, a, a bonus versus humans like the Nodachi. And animal-wise, well, yeah, if you're going to be going against animals, maybe don't bring your hacker people. But the Long Cleaver is really interesting in that it's the exact same as the Paladin, stats-wise. Exact same cut, exact same blunt, it just has slightly more reach. So effectively it has identical damage, the only difference is, is over here in the specials. Instead of getting 50% versus robots, it gets 20%, and it gets rid of the human malice. So this thing is perfectly effective against humans, it has no malice against them, well, no bonus either. It's just bad versus animals, and not quite as good versus robots as the Paladin's Cross. I'll also be slightly longer, I'm quite intrigued by that one. Uh, I also threw in the, the Moon Cleaver just to demonstrate one of the weird quirks of this game that's just completely unintuitive. Uh, for example, this here has the exact same blunt damage as the Long Cleaver. However, if we go over to blunt damage here, you notice it's actually got more blunt damage than the long cleaver actually happening. Why? Well, it's to do with the percentage of damage. It's because the higher percentage of damage here is cut, the lower percentage is blunt, 
hitting most of it leans towards the cut side here, whereas this, the lower percentage of damage is cut, the higher percentage is blunt, so it actually leans towards the blunt side. You still end up with less damage overall because, you know, there's less numbers here, but it's just, it's one of those little things that got me. I, I, it was a little bit unintuitive for me anyway. So looking at this, my immediate reaction was, yeah, well, Falling Sun for the majority of your guys. That's just, like, massive damage, great, wonderful weapon. And then if you want to do some armor cracking, probably bring along some Paladin's Cross or Long Cleavers. Or maybe have them carry both weapons and then swap them out as you need. These things are basically can openers. If you're facing crab people, you're facing heavily armed Holy Nation, robots, anything like that, these things will just shred, which is what we want. But I was kind of wondering, well... They designed this game so well. You see, uh, let's just say the... Yeah, let's say the heavy polearm here. Heavy polearm, great weapon. It's got too low damage, though. You can see here it's, it's about 50. But you can find yourself some unique weapons, like the higher tier ones, like a heavy polearm that's a Mewtwo grade. So this heavy polearm here. This does 63.83 damage, which actually puts it just in between the Flesh and the Moon Cleaver. You're almost doing Moon Cleaver, Long Cleaver, Paladin's Cross levels of damage. At the same time, you actually keep the armor penetration. So you've got the 30% armor penetration. Beautiful. And you get 25% armor, 25% uh, bonus versus animals. In fact, both the Heavy Pole Arm and the Pole Arm, if you get the, the highest level versions of them, they would seem quite nice weapons in terms of you're still able to slaughter animals and it's a 50% bonus versus all animals. Not just big things and gorillas and leviathans. Every single animal you encounter, 50% bonus. I think that works against crabs as well. And there is a little bit of a bug where I think it's the heavy pole arm. Uh, the person who wields it, you can get them to respawn in multiple times when you can get an, uh, as many maximum level of heavy pole arms as you want. Wait, it might be pole arm or heavy pole arm. Heavy pole arm. The heavy pole arm guy can be respawned back in multiple times according to the wiki. Don't know if that still works, but if that was the case, having a, a lot of people equipped with heavy pole arms might be quite nice, assuming they're all max level. Also, the ring saber. Remember the way I was uh, sort of saying it's not that great late game? But if you get the highest level of ring saber, the, there, there's usually only one high level version of a, a weapon. Some of them don't even exist, there's, but most weapons have a high level version, the, the Mewtwo version. This one here comes in at 77 damage which puts it right about there. Now, okay, bear in mind, the majority of that is cut, only a small amount of it's blunt, and you don't get any bonuses on top of that. But that's pretty incredible for something that only has a 20 strength requirement, and you can start training on that the moment you start the game. So maybe your starting character might be trapped out in a desert somewhere, starts with a desert saber, uses that to clean up some spiders to get their early, early blooded. You can still late game and give them the best saber possible, and then they will actually be a pretty decent force, and it won't have wasted all that time to put into it. So I think what they're aiming for here is the highest level version of these weapons, if you equip it, is probably better than most of the ones you can craft of pretty much almost any other weapon. Meaning, just say you've got a choice between, like, you've got Paladin's Crosses on all your people, but a Flesh Cleaver shows up, which is not a perfect weapon, to be honest. It's got shorter range, and even with that 20% damage bonus versus humans, you're barely going to be drawing even with the Long Cleaver. But if you get the, uh, the, the highest level version of it, damage would actually be significantly more, and it might actually be worth equipping. They want you to have all of your troops equipped with different weapons of the highest quality levels possible. I think that's what the devs were aiming for, and they kind of pushed it that way. But for me personally, I'm thinking we're going to have about eight people with, you know, Falling Suns, and then about eight people with Hackers, probably Paladins, Cross, or Long Cleaver for cleaning up robots. And that should give us a good all-round force for mincing everything, and then depending on what weapons we acquire along the way, we might just train some people out. You know, I know this game has been around a long time, but I thought someone would have put together a, a table like this somewhere on the wiki. It's just, you, there's no real way to compare weapons without just opening multiple tabs. It's Star Sector all over again. I suppose that's why I love these games, teasing out the little bits of information from all the stuff you find around the place. But, uh, yeah, I'm thinking our newbies are all going to be getting hackers. I want lots and lots of hackers on all our people, just because I think them wielding giant swords should be pretty amusing, and late game we can hopefully do something fun with it. And that is why we put this little caravan together to go raid the Holy Nations for their blueprints, because we wanted to get their Paladin's Cross blueprint. We ha already had the Flesh Cleaver, so... Uh, or the Long Cleaver, I think it was? We, we already had the other one, so we weren't too worried about those, but couldn't go anywhere without the Paladin's Cross, especially since we're going to start hitting up labs and stuff now, and are you guys just going to run right across the water? Yep, fair enough, fair enough. All right, I'll see you when we get back to base. Well, weapons choices made, everything sorted. I've moved all our wind turbines up here onto the ridge. I just think it looks nice. Uh, though that branch is probably, you know what, not going to worry about it. Now we're going to change our walls a bit. What we want to do is make this more uh, inward facing, and we're also going to want to put some crossbow turrets and maybe a few towers and stuff. Yeah, let me, give me a minute here while we dismantle this. The thing is, you can just dismantle things instantly, which feels a little bit broken, but 
that's okay. I'm thinking that looks a little better, different, whatever. This will be rather expensive. We don't care. 60 building materials, 10 iron, iron plates. Yeah, easy peasy. We can afford all of that. This stuff's been switched off for quite some time because we've got, I think, a couple of hundred of building materials in storage and stuff lying on the ground. All right, this should allow us to build these up. Then we can stick some crossbows up there and we'll have ourselves a nice little kill box in here. Well, that's the theory. Also, we'll have two giant towers we don't need. Um, sure we'll find something for them. We can use them for, like, weapon storage or something. Perfect. Now what we can do is start placing turrets up here. I'm thinking... Yeah, these make perfect vantage points to murder people down there. So we might want to split this up a bit. I'd like to have a sort of a kill box where we could... Well, gates at gates say halfway down so that we get plenty of time to shoot at them. Then by the time they break through the first gate, there'll be less of them left. By the time we get to the second gate, even less again. Hmm. Let me think. Oh god, that's completely out of center. You know what? I don't care. Trying to build stuff in this is really awkward. <laughs> It's it's not the best building uh, part of any game I've ever played. In fact, it's pretty terrible, but uh, we'll, we'll sort something out. I am liking the look of that. We've put four crossbows up here, four crossbows up there. That should be deliciously tasty for anyone trying to attack us. I will have to play around with the crossbows to figure out how they work right, but I'm not too worried. I'm sure we'll come up with something. Uh, so we can close that door. We now have a little airlock system where we can have our people go in and out. And hopefully, once the fighting starts, we can have our crossbow people up here. There seems to be a bonus for having height. So, uh, it doesn't list anything. It'll probably list something once we actually get someone to man the crossbow. But we're we're nice and high up. We're 32 meters in height, which should increase the damage of those. Which, I'm hopeful, will make it more painful for our enemies and easier for us. Alright. Uh, you. Hey. Why is that? Door is closed. No, open that door up. Perfect. Now, you three I have a task for. Now... We have one last thing to do before we can fit, leave these uh, newbies on their own. And that's get them a little bit of strength training. But for that, I'm going to need a bunch of backpacks. And I left them all back in, ah uh, yes, over here. In Heng? Heft. So I think what we'll do is we'll pop through the robot base on the way there. Thing is, we, we're just going to avoid Venge by bringing along Meep. Meep here is immune to acid rain. So are the animals. So we'll just send them through the robot territory, avoid all the fiery death, and avoid the uh, Holy Nation. Easy peasy. In this uh, black desert city, we can get our hands on Sad Neil. I have been advised to recruit them. Eh, uh, hmm. Another organic one. Must be the trillion person I've met. You all blend into one after a few hundred years. Whether you're bug-eyed, horned, or original flavor. Then after a few thousand, I can read you like a book. Eh, uh, hmm. You know how dull this is? Dull enough to make you mope hopelessly in a dead-end town while the rest of your kind prattle on about sized sprockets and rusted knees in an endless orgy of... Ailment resentment. Okay. Oh. I, I tried going back outside once. It smelled funny and there were far too many flies. Not to mention all the killing. Oh, that's right. The cannibalism. Awful place. Well, he has got a point. Um. Oh, don't exaggerate. It's not that bad. It is that bad. Ah, oh, Jesus. Uh, maybe you just need a new dream to live for. I had a <laughs> I've had dreams. None ended well. Dreams are silly things. I wouldn't recommend them. Uh, how about working for me? I can show you excitement. I hate excitement. Agawan. <laughs> I'll join you, but only because I'm weak and given easily to peer pressure. Sigh. All right, then. I hate my life. Well, sad, Neil. Welcome to the team. Your stats are... Wow. You are just a barrel of yuck. You have literally negatives and everything except three in weaponsmithing, robotics, medic, engineer, uh, melee defense attack... Like, how have you lived this long and sucked this much? It's, um, it's frankly incredible. You know what? It's fine. Uh, let's go see the shop. I think there's some AI cores we can buy here. Looking through their inventory, there is a few things we would like, like all of those science books. They would be really nice, please, and thank you. Uh, as well as that, they appear to have some AI cores. 25 grand a pop. Uh, ouch. Ouch. Ouch, okay, that uh, was expensive, but I think it was worth it. That should get us hydroponics, which means we can get wheat and veg, which means we can start moving into some other crop types. Ah, uh, excellent. All right, uh, that done. Time to make one last pit stop. We want to go to... Ah, yes, hang over here. Perfect, we just got to avoid the verge with all these laser beams in the way out, and we'll be good to go. Aw, oh, poor Donatello. Despite being named after a turtle, they're the slowest swimmer. Well, actually, that kind of makes sense. One of the things we also did is we brought along gas masks for everyone. 
well, me, they're the only one who can be affected by this. And that way we're able to get through the, this whole area without getting too badly injured. Well, okay, I noticed after he started coughing, but whatever, the, the idea was there. I knew how to protect them on the way through. And now that will protect them from the, well, getting their head crushed by something if you run into any dangers. A quick stop back home at the, well, at the place I consider home, where we did most of our early grinding. And if we check under inventory here, we have got ourselves a whole bunch of backpacks for grinding up people's strength, and we picked up a bunch of meat and supplies. Why not while we're here? Also, all that stolen stuff. I think I'm going to go go and sell that to the, the robots. Why not? Might as well clear out our stuff of all the stolen goods and top up our money supply a bit. We did sort of, um, you know, tear through it quite nastily there last visit. Well, I liked that. We can actually see our outpost in the distance with the windmills, tur with the turbines running. That's actually kind of cool. As well as that, when I'm looking on the map now, it shows up as a proper, almost city-like thing. I presume that since we put in... Oh. Traveling through my... Dust bandits. No, we don't care. We're just... What? Sad, Neil. You just keep running. The rest of you murdered a lot of them. I think the bull... Hitchcock could take care of this older runner. Hitchcock? They do, like, what? They just do 82 damage? Hit him again. 123 damage. Come on. Do it again. Oh, 120 to one, 119 to the other. Like, they one-hit that guy. They literally killed him with a one-hit to the stomach. They also do splash damage, so if you can get a large group of dust bandits, they make an absolute glorious mess. 112 with one hit. Oh, only 88. One with the second? Well, three-hit kill. What did you get? Took out the entire leg, and took out most of the chest, and their blood is mostly gone. Well, that's fine. All right, uh, are we done here? Uh, have we finished murdering all of these people? Oh, seriously, there's no... Fine, we'll catch up with Sad Neil in a bit. Well, now it's time to do something uh, a little annoying. we got to finish off the last of the training. So for the last of the training, what we've got here is all of them need strength. We're all done. Their, their dexterity has been done by the martial arts, but we just want to get them about 50 or so, everyone up to about 50 strength. I think the lowest one right now is green. After that comes Bard. So once, or Beep is it? No, green. Once green hits 50, we're going to stop all of this training. This training is rather simple. Every single one of them are overloaded. We gave them a bunch of backpacks with uh, iron in them. Only about 250 kilos. We're not trying to max them out here. We're just trying to get them high enough. And honestly, it's it's a real pain. <laughs> but we got innuendo here. We've given them a whole bunch of stuff, crammed their inventory full of stuff, and they've got one space left. And that one space, they just put copper into. As in, when this hits five copper, they try and take all the copper out. They only have space for one copper. And because they only have space for one copper, they put that in their inventory, leave the other four behind, and then start the slow trek over to, where is it? Over to there, to the copper storage. And then once they get all the way to the copper storage, they drop off that one copper. Then they turn around and go all the way back. And yes, I have put them on sneak. Not to train sneak at all, it's just to slow them down. Otherwise, they'd zip over and back really fast. The, the group is spreading out and getting dragged around. This way, it's much easier. What happens is it takes them so long to get there and back, they get plenty of training along the way. And then by the time they get to the end, they will have to mine out one piece. But it doesn't take that long. And then off they go again. At this rate, uh, who was it? Was there slowest one? Green? What are you looking like right now? Your strength is up to 42. Excellent. Just another eight levels to go in red here. I'm going to go grab a cup of tea. Oh, it's done. Finally. They're all up to 50 strength. Not only that, they've all got a, a few levels in stealth. Since they've been in stealth mode, it turns out this bull counts as a enemy or, I don't know, another person. So when they're walking past it, they gain stealth going by. Including Hickok. Hickok is now a stealth bull. They have a stealth of 63, which I don't know how that works, but sure, we'll go with that. We even managed to level up their strength a bit by overloading them. They they now can carry an awful lot more. They're up to 48 kilos, which you have to multiply by 10, so 480 kilos. They can carry 480 kilos in that backpack and not be slowed down. That's kind of insane. Uh, Speed-wise, though, they're still trapped at about, you know, what, actually 28, yeah. All right, we're gonna unload everyone and then go on a little bit of a killing spree. I want to kill something like a lot. It's been a while since we killed something, and oh, what are these? Starving bandits. Oh, guys, don't don't come in that door. This is not going to go well for you. We've only got a couple of guys here, but then you're going to get swarmed. Yep. Yeah. Oh. What was that? I thought I saw something fly away. Was that a limb? Oh, never mind. Oh, it was that guy? He seemed to bounce. Well, never mind. Uh, I don't think they're going to make it past their defense. This is what normally happens. Our guys show up, they crush everyone. Anyone gets injured, they go back here. That's very rare. And yeah, then I just usually have to remember to pull them back at some point. Oh god, that's so much green. Oof. We haven't even started equipping some of the new weapons. All right, I'll uh, do some tidying up and then it's time to go kill something. So after all that blood, sweat and tears, uh, including 
We now have an elder big thing in here by accident. Uh, this thing actually has just grown up and become elder, and its toughness is 53. We have accidentally made some super beaks. These things are going to be incredibly tough when you release them and start fighting them, but uh, I'm not fighting them today. Today we're going to go do some sort of questing. And Sad Neil is the slowest one of the group, so we're going to get him to lead the way. We're going to have him head, where is it? It's over here. There's a crumbling lab I've been meaning to investigate. We've Normally when we're coming down here, we have to avoid all these nasty areas, so we end up going around this crumbling lab, and I thought, well, let's go have a look. We already checked out the armory rune. Uh, after that, I really don't want to go down here. I've been advised that this place is death. Uh, it also has a place called Ominous Place listed in it. I, I don't want to go near that. I am liking the look of over here. There's lots and lots of runes to investigate, so I think we'll go there once we're, uh, we've cut our teeth, so to speak. But I want to try at this crumbling lab's place over there, so let's get on the... let's hit the road. Oh, yeah, I should probably point out what we actually did. Uh, our first eight people are now all equipped with Falling Suns. They haven't changed. That is their standard equipment. Then after that, we've switched them all over to the next eight, Paladin's Cross. It's great at killing, at armor penetration, killing robots, which is about half your life. So, perfect. Including Sad Neil's got one of those, and Beep. Then we also brought along a few animals. Maybe too many. It's just, uh, it's the way it is, okay? Oh, and I installed the mod that allows me to add more than 30 people. However, I don't really want to use that unless I have to. Once we get around to getting a few more recruits, we'll probably use it, but uh, I I don't want to go like and hire 70 people or something like that. Just going to keep this around the 30 mark. If we got to go two or three over, then yes, okay, we'll use the mod just a tiny bit. Here's where new recruits get to blood themselves. None of them have any experience with the new heavy weapons they're wielding, or the hackers, so... As you can see here, this bone, excellent katana skills and pole arms, zero in hack, well, one in hackers. Uh, hopefully this will work out okay. We're going to send them in against uh, whatever these things are, bone, bone, boneyard wolves. If anything goes wrong, what we can do is send in the backup team over here. They're just kept in reserve. Anything goes sideways, they can help out. Yeah, their damage is not going to be great, but guys, what are you doing? Get in there. Yeah. Ah, reset to passive, that's the problem. Attack all. Do what you gotta do. Right, and Sad Neil, where are you? Ah, damn it, Sad Neil. Okay, this is my bad. I should have been paying more attention. But hey, it's our first fight of the day. Our first real one. Ouch. Oof. Yeah, they are pretty tough. We're gonna need a lot of healing. Thank God we brought uh, some bags. Damn, they are tough. Well, on the bright side, this is going to train the toughness. And they've got some decent armor. Yeah, that seems to be fine. We'll see how their skills are working out at the end of this. Oh, hero fodder is already down. Well, oh, isn't that just wonderful? Tell you what, Muppet, get over here and uh, give him a little bit of TLC. Yeah, there you go. We'll have them back up and running in no time. Uh, hero fodder, living up to the name. Oh, and the weapons they've got are not good against bone dogs, but that's sort of half the point. They'll get more swinging on the way. All right. Everyone, you can uh, take off hold and passive. Get get into work. Get everyone back up on their feet. Ah, Beep wins again. Ha ha, Beep. Beep seems to be enjoying this way too much. Actually, no, just, just the right amount. After that one engagement, Hackers has gone up to 7, 10, 11, 22? Okay, they must have had some beforehand. Uh, 5, 4, 5, and 11. Right, so it shouldn't take that long to get them to about 20 or 30, at which point they'll start becoming a little bit more uh, efficient. All right, once they're all rested up, probably first thing in the morning, we'll head back onto the lab. I think the Boneyard Wolves have decided that there's too many corpses around here. They're just going to ignore us. They've stopped being hostile. Uh, I was just happy to stay here and murder everything that came near us. We killed some gorilla bandits, some land bats, some more bone dogs. Uh, in fact, Donatello's looking a little bit stuffed right now. But it could always be better. Let's see what else they want to throw at us. We've cut this up to industrial scale training at this point. We just sort of get into a fight somewhere, we then set up some beds, and then other stuff comes along, or we end up fighting the same enemies again and again as they get back up. At fight, we take injuries and toughness and all that, but uh, check out Beep here. Relatively new, toughness at 25. Their ha hackers are only up to 7, but uh, their melee attack's still low. Once their melee attack starts going up a bit more, they get better. Their melee defense has, has rocketed up quite nicely. Els there has actually done really well for themselves, probably because they started with decent melee attack, or maybe, I don't know, that improved. And Sad Neil, same again, they're all actually coming up nicely. Bit of toughness is, like, Sad Neil started with minus one toughness, they're now up to 12. I think, uh, I think we'll do a little bit more killing here before we move on. Well, especially considering most people are doing a little bit of healing. 
I am really not liking these Western Hivers. Uh, Southern Hive Prince. Uh, what do we got over here? Drone Guard from the Southern Hive. These Southern Hive people are tough. I'm trying to do uh, mono a mono with them to try and grind up our skills a little bit. And we'll take the rest of them back. And I'm using our uh, people with the weakest hacking skills. Where is Beep there? Oof, Beep is already taking a hell of a pounding. It's just their, uh, their melee attack is just a little bit too slow. Come on, Beep, get an attack off. Or just collapse unconscious. It's fine. Yeah, you know what? We'll send in one of the big boys. Uh, matchbox, you might as well get... You know what? Attack all. Get in there. We'll take you off hold and passive. Oop. There we go. And then the first thing we'll do once Beep is healed up, we'll stick him into a bed to heal. Hey, much healing as we can possibly... Oh, damn it. Alice is down as well. Like I said, they are tough. Right, attack all. Right, Moku... Els is down. Anyone else? No. Two down already. This is not good. Hey, Beep, pick him up. Or pick up Beep. Hey, we'll throw him into bed over there. No one else is down yet. That's good news. And this is pretty much how we go. Now, excuse me while we just grind these down. If the first wave fails, we'll send in the second and the third. We've got enough people to take care of it. Well, this has been going incredibly well. We have... We have been fighting and leveling up all the way across. We still haven't gotten to even close to where we're trying to go. We're trying to go over to Crumbling Labs. We're actually, no, we're about two thirds of the way there, but we just keep getting caught up in fights. Right now we're hiding from the acid rain under a little tent we made out of animal hides. Works just fine. A couple of people on the end are going to get burnt, but uh, we just put the hivers out there, so they're fine. No, no problems at all. Everyone else is sitting in the middle, and we even brought along a bunch of jackets as well, remember? So... Yeah, we've got these uh, dust coats that we can give to everyone if we really need to. Though I think I'm just going to stick them all back in the armor. Might be a bit safer, consider the location. We have been butchering so many things out here. Sorry, but it's gonna. I, I don't think we're going to get to the lab today. We'll get to the lab tomorrow. We can raid both of those, kill whatever spider bots are in there, take the loot, and then we can finally get on with the research. I realized we could have actually done some research already. We already have the AI cores to get into hydroponics, but we can leave that all till tomorrow. And tomorrow, raiding of labs and more leveling up of our team. I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.